Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 127, we'll take a look at assessing architectural risk. Now, this is going to be part one of a multi-part lesson on various aspects of architectural risk. You can find all of my lessons and a catalog of those, as well as a description, and even view them through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. And this is where Software Architecture Monday is actually housed. You can also, of course, see those on YouTube as well. Now, most of my lessons that I do in Software Architecture Monday are based on my two books that I wrote with Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and our recently released Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. So I want to talk about assessing architectural risk. And what I want to do is show you a little roadmap, and then I'm going to split these lessons up into different parts to show different aspects of being able to assess architectural risk. Uh, the first step is determining what are we going to assess in terms of that risk. And those are determining those risk dimensions. Then there's the actual exercise of being able to assess that architectural risk. And finally, the third step is to measure that risk. And then this becomes a whole complete cycle which just continues as the application and actually as the business changes. Now in part one here, what I want to focus on is the very starting point, which is determining those risk dimensions. And I'll show you what I mean. This is basically asking the question, well, you would like me to perform an architectural risk assessment. What would you like me to assess? What are we assessing anyway? And let me show you the three dimensions that exist within a typical architecture assessment. Now, the first is the overall context. Well, what am I actually assessing? Is it a particular services? Is it an area of the application, a particular domain, one part of it? And then the criteria. What am I basing that assessment on? And now, those are the two dimensions that exist. And then what we do is have the third part right here, which is the actual assessment, which forms kind of those uh, qualified numbers or an assessment risk uh, based on the context versus the criteria. So what I want to do here in this lesson is talk a little bit about the context and the criteria to form those dimensions to prepare us in a future lesson about how to actually assess that risk. So let's talk about the context first. Now the context can be of one of two forms. We can do a context by service or context by a domain area of the application. And let me show you what I mean. I'm going to use an example here of a fictitious application that allows for standardized testing of students. And notice here what we have. We have two separate portions here of the application. There's a student piece and an admin piece over here. Over on the administrative portion here, we've got a lot of reporting functionality, test administration to create tests and update them and schedule them, and of course, security and sign-in for admins. Over on the testing side here, we've got a user interface that comes through a gateway where students sign in and then actually take a test by getting questions presented to them and also the answers recorded. And then we've got an auto grader which records them and stores the answers in the student database. If we're to assess risk of this application right here, um, one of the ways we can do that is by service, where we take each individual service and we assess the overall risk architecturally from that context. And this is what it might actually look like. Where notice across the top, now we're going to be, of course, filling all of this area in with what is the risk, um, but it's based on the reporting service, the test admin service, ad, admin sign-on, and so forth. Uh, now, if we have coarse grain services, this might be a valid way to actually assess overall risk. The problem is when we start to have a lot of workflows that combine various services, especially when those services become more fine-grained. And so for that, there's another aspect we can look at the context, and that is assess the risk of this architecture by domain area. Meaning instead of each individual service, let's assess 
the overall risk for the admin portion of the system, and then the real-time runtime test-taking portion of the system, and the back-end auto-grading, which is all asynchronous. That runs in the background. And so now we've got three areas in which we can now do an assessment. The assessment here is going to be more coarse-grained. However, it is inclusive of all the services involved with that particular area. And so these two choices we have within the context part of our assessment dimension. But then we ask, and I'm going to stick with the domain areas here, well, test admin, test taking, and grading. What am I associating that risk with? What's my criteria that I'm basing risk on? How do we determine that? There's a lot of ways in which we can have different kinds of criteria. It might be operational criteria. Uh, it might be based on functionality risk. But architecturally, one of the things I like to do with my risk assessments is rate that risk by my architecture characteristics, those things that are sometimes called non-functional requirements, system quality attributes. You see, these are things that the architecture itself needs to support, irrespective of the functionality. That architecture, in this case, needs to support feasibility, security, reliability, responsiveness, availability, data integrity, and elasticity, all of these aspects. This is a great place to start in terms of saying, what should I assess risk on? Uh, do we have risk of, notice the top three here, our responsiveness for that student, data integrity to make sure we don't lose any answers, and elasticity so that we can scale up and down as more students take the tests concurrently. Are those okay? Do we have any risk in those particular important areas? And as a matter of fact, there's three lessons you can go to and to get more information about this part. Uh, lesson 112 uh, really talks about this overall characteristics worksheet, which you can download, and how to use this. Uh, lesson 37 uh, talks about how to identify uh, these architectural characteristics and give some examples uh, with uh, deriving those from business goals, business needs, and business concerns. And then finally, Lesson 123, uh, which also shows uh, aspects of composite architectural characteristics, which help guide us in terms of those driving ones we record here. I've got a lot of other lessons in between those that talk about the differences between performance and responsiveness and what scalability means, and what elasticity means. And so lots of different lessons on these architecture characteristics. However, back to our architecture risk assessment, these make great risk criteria. Because now I can say based on test taking, are we at risk for feasibility of being able to even uh, uh, do this in cost and time budgets, um, security, reliability of our test taking versus our grading. And from here, now at this point, we can start to identify that risk by these quadrants based on criteria and our context. What is our overall risk for that particular area? Now in this lesson, part one here, I just wanted to really set the stage by introducing how to determine the risk criteria. Now, this would be a great exercise after you've seen this video to start setting up this kind of grid, this kind of spreadsheet in preparation for the next lesson that we see on 128, uh, which I'll be talking about how to identify these particular numbers and what they really mean. So this has been Lesson 127, Assessing Architectural Risk Part 1, which is really identifying those architectural risk categories, or I should say criteria, and context. Now stay tuned for Lesson 128 in two more Mondays, where I'll still be talking about assessing architectural risk, but we'll look at Part 2, about how to determine if something's low, medium, or high risk, and how we can leverage those numbers within our architectural assessment. And so until then, I hope that you can exercise this and get an architectural assessment ready so that we can actually, in two weeks, find out how to actually assess that risk. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in two more Mondays.